I'm trying to help you. Why don't you think it over? Meet with Narl, my agent who's dealing with You know, with seeing the nightclub uh, on the Citadel here does remind me a lot of Anachronox. And I already have a deal with Jonas Sedaris, the Eclipse leader. I don't know what oh. Anachronox is, friend, so... Okay, tell us about Anachronox, Chris. Anachronox was basically a um, JRPG done by Western developers Dion Storm under the guy under the uh, leadership of Tom Hall, who was basically an ex id guy who came from Doom uh, and Wolfenstein and Commander Keen, and they made a basically a, a Western RPG set in um, a very similar setting to the Citadel here, which is basically in Anachronox. Um, they also had the concept of cycles where each universe would be born and then it would expand and then gravity would eventually contract because this was done in the 1990s before we realized that wasn't going to happen and you would have an, a universe expand, contract, expand, contract and the previous universe was shuffling matter back into the, our current universe to uh, basically make their previous uni universe last forever. The idea being that if they got rid of enough matter, the gravity wouldn't collapse everything back into a singularity and they would have their eternal cycle. The difference here is that instead of sort of having this mechanical universe like an Akronox that functions as sort of both a place where people have colonized and a sort of ancient machine that does things, um, don't get me wrong. You're good. Uh, this game uh, sort of that. has the bad guys enforcing the cycle, where in Anachronox, the whole thing was to break out of the cycle and have the previous universe last forever. This game is about having the bad guys come and enforce the cycle and end this universe. Either way, it's an interesting sort of setting for end of the world, having an ancient artifact that we all colonized and set up sports bars on. And now they get <laughs> the you know, there's a lot of truth to that. I'll give it. I'll give it credit. That's exactly what would happen if we found an ancient artifact. And I'm not. I'm not joking either. If if we thought it was safe and it made electricity for us, it would not take us long before we set up sports bars, nightclubs, and places to buy shoes. It's weird because if you know the end of of this game and what the Citadel ultimately does. Building a nightclub on the Citadel doesn't make a lot of sense, but building a nightclub on Anachronox also doesn't make a lot of sense, so it's it's sort of comparable in a weird way. So this is kind of like, kind of why I like uh, uh, Vega significantly more than Jacob, because he's what Jacob was supposed to be, which was sort of this, um, you know, a soldier who's in touch with you know, being the a voice soldier of the grunts. rather than some great big hero. Yeah, he's the the voice of the the non-coms, the grunts, that kind of thing. Uh, not that non-coms are necessarily grunts, but yeah. Um, and and Jacob was just kind of a boy scout, whereas Vega, you know, seems to have more of a personality. You know, he goes out, he goes gets drinks a few times. You know, he he actually hangs out with other grunts because there are grunts in this game now. Also, going back to Arya for a second, so let me get this straight, Arya. You want me to get the Blue Suns, the Blood Pack, and whatever those other guys were, so that I can use them against the Reapers. This that struck me as being Why very dumb. They wouldn't would I do that? Why would anyone ever want them to help us? <laughs> They're Not because I'm worried they... that they're gonna like shoot us in the back or anything, but because they're really bad at what they do. Yeah, they're useless. Mer Imagine freelance Imperial stormtroopers. Okay, that's who you are going to recruit. People that are Imperial stormtroopers in levels of skill, but don't have the reliability. They're a bunch of mercenary drunken idiots. Bow, Alun's doing some heavy lobbying. Again, but the game says that Blood Pack and Blue Suns are badasses. So once again, it's kind of the the disconnect between what you're told and what you're shown. I like how you didn't even mull over that decision. <laughs> I just like Fucked randomly yeah. like, <laughs> like oh, hey, yeah. you should support this guy. Yeah, yeah, he's right. Whatever he's saying is right, and you, other person, are just wrong. I don't even know what you were arguing about, but he was closer, so he's right. Uh, 
Um, there's supposed to be another terminal in here, but I don't remember where it is. This is this is all the way down right on here. the end. It's all the way down on the end because, if I'm thinking right, this is when the uh, right Batarian when the Batarian ambushes you. Oh no, that's. No, no, no. That's a different quest. That's a different quest. There's so many that drag oh, you across hi, this damn cargo bay. Fancy all of us running into each other because the, the Citadel is like really big, right? We convince the Council to accept our wounded. Nowhere else to go. How bad is it? More dead than injured. 85% killed in action. We'll need a morgue soon. Just 85? When you're fighting rapers. Casualties are that high? Our frontline units are being wiped out, whole platoons at a time. A single Reaper can destroy nine or ten of them in one attack. Yeah, I, I don't imagine that's because, you know, you're it's trying to smarter. fight giant space Reapers, robot Reapers, monsters with infantry. But, you know, I mean, okay, whatever. Can we patch them up? Get them back into the fight? Maybe this is like like trying to fight a a battleship in World War Two by by getting all your men onto a giant floaty raft and then like paddling out there so you can shoot at it with small arms. Any sign of your family? What the? And if you just fight bravely enough, you'll win the day. It's just just armies of dinghies out out on the open sea fighting against. Against battleships and shit. And aircraft carriers. And of course the aircraft carriers inexplicably come close enough so that you could paddle out to them. <laughs> Remember those insects that paralyze people and let you kidnap them and turn them all into... into what are you even talking collecting? about? That would be a terrible enemy. they probably call them like the harvesters or some bullshit like that. And nobody would want to fight those. Bow, here's the correspondence. If there's any it has to be so stated that the um, Citadel does not feel as much of a real place as the first game. No, it doesn't. Right. It feels much smaller. It, some of it is just the design. There's a lot of walls in your way. You never feel like you're in a big space. You feel like you're in Rat Tunnel. I gotta say, that was never the Citadel's strong suit, feeling like real place. Uh, I think at best, it sort of felt like a quest hub to me. It it feels better than it does um, in Mass Effect 2. Also, it should be noted that everywhere here is in the Presidium, or in the docking ring on the Presidium. Where are the wards? Like, even the wards, as they're called, are just wards that are on the Presidium. What about the big arms? They're not even in this game. I mean, obviously part of that is so that they can reuse this kind of cool Presidium model they got going here. Which, to be fair, is pretty cool. And this is the first game where I think they really sold it as a ring. And where you got a sense Yeah, because the other game you were on, like, the very bottom of the ring. Yep. And so it didn't... F I mean, you could see it curving, but you didn't get that sense of scale. The work of the Enkindlers cannot be stopped. Why are you trying to help the Reapers? We obtained information regarding... This the is a species they really needed more sources. of, by the way. Yeah, seriously. Elcor, Especially because they're not humanoid. Yes. Yes, the Elcor, H Hanar, and the, the other one. The three ones that they ignored the most are the three that I most wanted to see more of. The elephant people, the guy in the pressure suits, and the space jellyfish. As a faithful servant of the Enkindlers. Because of the head, those are heads down the coolest. Because they're the three that least resemble like. Yeah, you big stupid jellyfish! Haha! <laughs> this. Did they ever get new models for these things? This looks like this, the exact same model from oh my Mass Effect 1. Josh, that is the most racist thing I have ever heard. I don't think the 
Brewers are going to be doing anything today. I mean, but but they look fine. I mean, they 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 really do yeah. look okay, fine. Okay, so it's not like the humans quickly. We can we can either uh, coming up here. We'll get a renegade interrupt. We can either save the Spectre dude, or we can let this whole plan er, and let this whole planet get taken over by the Reaper, or we can save the whole planet and let this dude get killed. What? I'm thinking that one. Delayed. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> look, <laughs> look at that oh. shit. But he's. You know what, what is going on? <laughs> that was the worst animation. You did everything you could. It's like, aren't you a specter, dude? Enough. And you can't yeah, fight off one mook. Today. He's even you got a gun. <laughs> And the guy was like sort of choking your armor and you couldn't do anything about that? No, I noticed you saved his life, but uh, I, I decided to just because, you know, let's sacrifice the whole home world. Yeah, but obviously Hilariously, the assets you get from having the specters on your side by saving this guy are practically as good as the assets you get from having the Hanar on your side. Oh. It's like 60 versus 40. Which, on the scale of the thousands and thousands you'll be collecting, is pretty damn small. So, yeah. Remember how it was hard to get into the Spectre? Now it's apparently not that hard. All you gotta do is dress like a bumblebee and not have any idea how to fight. Like, that was the moment Falling to off show stuff off is the a bonus, too. Like, you would think that that guy was like the best of the best in the STG. And instead, he couldn't even win at fisticuffs. When he had a gun! Hey, that's right. Yeah, and did you see the way the dude was holding him? Like, he wasn't even fully choking him. And and he could talk just fine while he was being choked. It was like what? <laughs> he could talk fine. Like how long is it gonna take him to kill you like that? And literally, he oh, does God. die if if uh, if you don't save him. It's like what? Shepherd. And it's not clear hey, look, how it's he Anderson. Got, like, Good to see you too, sir. The character that should have died in the beginning, but instead they killed some random kid. I'm glad you managed to keep your ass alive, Anderson. That's more like it. So I imagine by now you've wiped the galaxy clean of Reapers and we can all come up for but air? But Shepard, I mean... Not quite. Shepard and Anderson's relationship... Aren't there always? It, it's weird, especially air. towards the end of this game, Sounds where he like becomes sort of a... ...borderline literal I father figure. But, but aside from that, their and relationship is, is interesting. Job. It's good. It yeah. works. Sorry about that. What? You have lost your connection to the Mass Effect 3 server. You must connect again to access online features of the title. Awesome. <laughs> so glad that we got that on camera. Excellent. Excellent. What's, What's our time guys? right now? 13 minutes. <laughs> Is Red Scar even watching this? Uh, I can't. Yeah, he's actually. Uh, no, because the, the, the stream is not working for me. How long this has it been doing awesome. that? Uh, for the past, like, episode and a half. Why didn't you say anything? There's nothing I can do. I'm trying to fix it, but... <laughs> Should we just end on this? Uh... <laughs> yeah, let's call it the week. <laughs> Awesome. Well, that's it, folks.